Hey, this is Alan over at Cobblers Plus. Today we're going to be working on a pair of these uh, Rocky boots. Um, you can see that they definitely, definitely need some new soles on there. Those are really, really worn out. Definitely not a bad boot. Gore-Tex and fairly sturdy. Um, it's a Goodyear welt, but it is plastic welt. But we're not replacing that welt today. We're just re-soling them. It's still somewhat intact, so we're able to stitch a new midsole onto it because that midsole is also sh just shot completely. So right now I'm just applying some tolling on here. It's basically like a thinner for adhesives. Help deactivate any adhesives. Sometimes there might be some kind of grime or anything that may prevent that sole from coming apart the way we need it to. any access there all right I'm just gonna take our whole knife here and start cutting through the stitches all around here right right underneath that midsole because that's going away anyways now these things have been just warped like crazy due to chemicals and heat and all sorts of stuff but i do like being able to cut through so easily on boots like this look at that came right off oh, keep that cushion there see if that cushion ends up getting damaged we have to replace it with cork usually a cork is preferred it's always recommended but we we'll try to keep as many of the original parts intact unless you specify what you want done on it. So I'm just going to run through with some rubber cement gluing back this little cushion here. The cushion has two, two functions. Of course it's a cushion so it'll absorb any impact that you're when you're walking or standing. And the other thing is it's actually helping fill in that void that's in between that Goodyear welt that they have there because if there was nothing filling it in, you'd really feel these corners there quite a bit. But we're just going to press that down a little bit and then just give it some time to dry. So I'll stick it up here on the shelf. Now Goodyear welts, they come in different... Uh, different materials they have one key name of course Goodyear welt which usually are leather but underneath that name of Goodyear welt there are other smaller names for different materials and types of Goodyear welts but in general most everyone calls them still a Goodyear welt because it's stitched all right see how worn that guy is there it's super thin right there that's about the thickness it was before, maybe a little bit thicker even. But anyways, like I was saying, Goodyear welds, I mean, there's a lot of different materials. Usually the ones that we work on, they're leather because we do a lot of Western boots and dress shoes are a more common thing. But sometimes even on Western boots and dress shoes, we get a plastic welt like these here. Now plastic's a little bit uh, cheaper for the company to manufacture the boots with. I don't know why they keep going with that plastic. You know, it's, again, like I said, it's it's cheaper, but it just doesn't hold up as well either, especially if you're trying to make a nice work boot. That one I got glued up there. I'll grab this one real quick again. All, right. All I gotta do is press it down. I don't have to hammer. Grab our midsoles there. The midsoles are just thin rubber like that that gets placed onto here. It's glued on, then stitched to that Goodyear welt. Afterwards, we get our oops, our Vibram sole here, and the Vibram sole gets glued on over top. Technically, it's designed specifically so that it can be resold easier down the road, so that this sole can just be removed use some heat or toluene or acetone or something to deactivate that adhesive and peel it up.
Um, in this case, we definitely weren't able to do that. And majority of work boots that I get through here, and even hiking boots too, they get worn down into that welt in the welt. I mean, not the welt, the midsole, and it gets damaged, so we have to replace that midsole anyways. But, you know, that happens, and we gotta do it. All right, so this one's all set. I'm gonna take it over to the sander and sand it out. Um, before I do that, I'm gonna allow the adhesives to kind of dry a little bit better so so that cushioning stays in place while we're sanding. Um, while it's drying, I'm gonna be sanding out a few other things anyways. So it gives a perfect amount of time to just dry a little bit. All right, so I'll see you guys back over at the machines here in just a second, all right? All right, so we're over at our sanding machine. This is our 24 grit belts that we have on here. They're a little bit rougher. It's gonna help clean off a lot of that old glue and grime and rough up the edges a little bit for us so that we can adhere the midsole to it and it binds nicely. So I guess that didn't take too long, but they're all roughed up now and cleaned off. At least majority cleaned off. So I'll meet you guys back over at the workbench. It's time to get these all glued. Oh, actually it's time to pull out the old stitches on these. So I'll meet you over by our machine that, um, actually these we're gonna have to pull by hand. They're a little too close there. We have a machine that'll help pull these stitches, but sometimes we have to do it by hand and this is gonna be that case there. So I'll meet you by the workbench for that. All right, so we're back over at the workbench and it's time to pull out the thread. It's not necessarily something you guys really need to watch, but I'll show you at least a couple. We've got our little awl here. It's just a little pointed tool like that. No, nothing too fancy on it. And we just go through trying to pull up these stitches. And once they come up like that, I'll grab just a couple of them like, like so. And then we grab the curved needle nose pliers like this and just pull them up. Yes, I'm dropping the thread everywhere. I don't want to have to go to the trash can after every little piece of thread. I've got a shop vac for that. But like I said, I won't bore you guys too much with this part of it. And I'll go ahead and do the rest of this off camera. But it gives you an idea right there. You can see that this section still has some thread there. And that little spot right there. I've removed mo most of that thread. So I'll go ahead and get that taken care of and I'll see you back when it's time to glue everything. All right. All right, so we're back here again and we're gonna glue everything up. Now beforehand, we're gonna go through, I already blew it off with some compressed air, but we're gonna go through with some acetone real quick and clean off the surface area just a little bit more. Helps it bind a little bit better too. All right, and I'm gonna be using this glue here. Now, there are a lot of different glues out there and we try to carry a good variety just because not every material is the same. There are different uh, techniques of adhering things. So, you know, some of you may have watched some of my other videos. I'm using this glue pot that's a different type of glue. This one is toluene based. This one is acetone based. And so, they react just a little bit differently, cure and dry a little bit differently as well. And because this boot is gonna be used in rougher conditions, I'm gonna be using a little bit of a different adhesive. Now there are some shops that, you know, they'll use the same adhesive for just about everything. It, it works for probably, uh, I would have to say maybe four, uh, closer maybe like 60 or 70 percent of the things that they get through but it doesn't work for a hundred percent of everything so you know if you get a pair of shoes that starts coming apart that could be why wrong adhesive was used or it could be the right adhesive just that they didn't treat it properly or didn't allow it to cure 
proper amount of time before continuing to do work on it. You know, some adhesives you can stick the sole on and just give it about five, 10 minutes and you can sand it out right away. Some you have to let them cure at least overnight as well. And some literally take seconds to activate as well. And we always try to try to keep good stock of adhesives. I mean, I've been trying to break it down almost like, almost like a scientist, I guess you could say. <laughs> but I'm not a scientist, I'm a cobbler, and they're always coming out with new materials on, on footwear, you know, new adhesives as well. I mean, I've tested out some adhesives and tried it out, and it was a complete failure. You know, so there are some, some that I just will not use anymore. I tested it out once, learned my lesson, and know not to use it anymore. All right, so let these dry for about 15, 20 minutes and they'll be ready to go. So I'll see you guys back in a little bit. All right, so we're back here again. I just pulled this guy out of the oven. You can see it's all nice and soft and flimsy. And we're just gonna make sure to lay this down. get out most of those air pockets. All right, now our press has different types of lasts, kind of like this, and so we end up being able to press out different sections at a time, usually this other boot here usually our press what it does is it'll press out the heel on its own and then it'll press this section right here then the ball of the foot and then the toe area and applying as much pressure as possible to make sure those adhesives bind properly um, it really comes in handy and it's a key thing especially when we're putting on the actual sole because at the moment we're putting on the midsole so that's a important key factor to be able to have but when it comes to the full soles because they're a little bit heftier and harder like that and thicker especially when we do that heel there you know if we have a press that does the entire sole all at once there's always a little gap right here that doesn't get adhered properly and it becomes a little problematic sometimes but when we start getting ready to stick these guys on i'll show you then our press how it's working it makes it a little easier and more visible what it's doing but uh, I'll just do this all off camera I'll stick it together so we've got the soles all pressed on I'm gonna run through our five and one here real quick it's just gonna press down on that weld section and make sure everything's secured on the very edges right. okay all done now we're just going to take our hook razor blade like that there and just cut off majority of that axis, well pretty much all that axis actually. And we're able to get fairly close with this razor blade to that welt without actually cutting that welt as well. It's a little better control. Now some shops will actually use, you know, like I said, my 5-in-1 here. It uh, does multiple things, it presses down the weld, it skives things, and there's a cutter on it. So some shops they'll actually just use the cutter and cut it off as close as they can, leaving maybe about roughly about an eighth of an inch still left over, and then afterwards um, sanding it or trimming it out on a machine. But I prefer to cut it as close as I can by hand. That way I don't accidentally end up sanding out too much of that weld or trimming it. I mean, it's a very, very slim chance that that will happen, but it can potentially happen. And now at this point, I'm gonna allow it to dry and cure. Um, again, because this is rubber onto plastic, it doesn't bind usually quite as well as say leather on leather or even crepe materials too. Um, so I'm gonna allow this to cure and set overnight before really doing much else with it um, because 
even stitching it too there's a foot that goes down and presses the welt here and it kind of squeezes it and that's just a potential that it may possibly pull up some kind of edge or squeeze it out of position and i don't want that to happen so i'd rather let this sit and cure overnight and um you know come back tomorrow and stitch it all back together all right so i'll leave it like this and i'll see you guys tomorrow then all right, we're back here again. I'll let these cure for a good little while overnight. And it's time to get the soles stitched up on them. First, I start out by spraying it down just a little bit. This helps lubricate it just, just enough so that it doesn't get caught up on our stitcher here. Now this is an outsole stitcher. It's got a little all that comes up and then right after it comes down the needle and grabs the stitch and loops it around the bobbin basically. So an outsole stitch is your good, your welted boots and shoes like that goes on the outside. And then there are other ones that are called Blake stitch where they go on the inside and good, your welted ones, outsole stitch. In other words, they are definitely far more superior just because they hold up longer periods of times. They could be resold plenty more times as well, or a Blake stitched boot or shoe has a lot of limitations on that. Oh, let me make sure I adjust my blade here because there's a little blade that cuts in to the material to give us a channel for the stitch to sit into but because this is a midsole we don't want that channel sitting there way too deep we actually want to sit a little more over top and when we start on the back end here somewhere on the inside it's uh, one it looks nicer and two it does secure it a little bit better So let's get started. double check to see how the stitches are lining up now the top stitch it's actually on the bottom for us when we're stitching so I really have to kind of look it over to make sure that everything is all right at least on the first uh, couple of inches and then we'll just continue on while the awl is holding it in place for us temporarily. Cut off the excess stitch here on the end. There we go. Toss that out. And stitches pretty all right on there on the downside with plastic sometimes it likes to slide on us and not get into the original holes or anything but gives you kind of an idea there I think we got pretty good sorry I can't really twist it around too much got the machine in the way a little bit plus it's all black too but you can see there on the bottom all the stitches seem to be pretty all right no no little miss spots sometimes again it is a machine that can act up a little and do a mistake and we got to make sure we correct that before we move on so i'll go ahead and do the other boot off camera for you guys and i'll meet you back at the workbench and we'll start getting ready the sole that we're going to glue up i'm going to rough up the bottom of the sole real quick before i start gluing it up some more to make sure i get off any access or 
any smooth spots that need to be roughed up. So we'll see you back in a little bit. All right, we're back here again. Got the sole here in the oven, Oof, nice and toasty. Stick the other one in real quick. All right. I'm just gonna line everything up as best we can. It's always kind of eyeball. There isn't really an exact measurement to all this really ever. So it takes a lot of practice and trial and errors over years of getting it lined up as much as possible. As far as this hammer though, it's not really gonna do much for us here. It is gonna help start secure it. But mainly, I'm trying to get out a lot of the air pockets out of here. And I'm gonna just take it over to the press. And then after I'm done doing all that, I'm gonna let this cure overnight. It's uh, getting close to, well, I've still got a couple of hours left, but I like to let this particular adhesive cure nicely overnight anyways before continuing on. But um, I'll move over the camera real quick to show you guys what the press is doing. So I'll uh, see you guys by the press in a second. All right, so we've got it on the press right now. We've got these large bricks that are like sponges in other words but they're a little bit of a different type of density and we have different attachments so this one i just took it off of is the heel attachment right there it does just this heel section back here and then we've got the last we've got different sizes and shapes and these and now we're going to switch it over and i've got these little wedges like that there that are made i've got to make some more of them but like to line them up and everything, so it presses out a very specific section. So we did the heel, now we're doing this back area over here, from here to the heel. Then we do the ball to foot area, and then finally from the ball to foot to the toe. That kind of pressure that's more concentrated, it just really helps a lot more with letting the adhesives bind better and makes it more secure as well. Again, like I said, I'm going to let this cure overnight before even cutting off the access here on our 5-in-1. But I will press it on our 5-in-1 as well. And um, after I do the press on it, then I'll just set it aside, let it cool off and start curing. And then I'll just see you guys back here tomorrow when it's time to sand it out. Alright, we'll see you later. Alright, so we're back here. We'll let these cure overnight fairly well. And now it's time to get them sanded up. I did cut off the axis just a little bit in a few spots where it was really sticking out. We're over here at our sanding machine. We've got a 24 grit sandpaper belt on it. So it's gonna get a little noisy. We can get started. I gotta turn my hat around so it doesn't get in your guys' way when you're watching. But let's get going. <laughs> So I'm just going to do one on camera for you and I'll do the other one off. But um, you can see right there that it's fairly, fairly rough. It still has a bunch of little pieces and everything. But again, this is just our 24 grit. We're going to move over afterwards and sand it out on our 100 grit and smooth everything out. Hit it on another machine to kind of fix up the edges a little bit. But this gets down fairly close to that welt. We're not actually sanding that welt quite yet. But we'll get close enough to where we don't have to stand there on the 100 grit machine and just sanding, sanding, heating up that sole too much because the heat does deactivate the rubber cement, unfortunately. So we'll go ahead and finish out the other one here in a second and we'll see you back in a little bit. All right. Over at our uh, other sander that has a lighter grit sandpaper, it's a 100 grit here. And then we also have this attachment, it's called a numb keg. It's kind of like a finisher, it helps us touch up some edges as well. So we'll go ahead and get started on these boots here and uh, get them all nice and smooth looking instead of rough like they are right now. 
turn my hat around for you. Now I wear the hat mainly because that dust flies around and it gets into the hair and it gets really grimy. So, you know, that's why I have it on, uh, especially working on the machines. But uh, it's going to get noisy again. So, you know, if you want to skip over this or if you want to watch through, I'll just kind of fast forward everything anyways. So, all right, let's get started. <laughs> Looks a lot smoother, it's a bit dusty there, but compared to say that one right there, uh, I'm trying to see it on the screen, definitely a lot smoother now, but I'll go ahead and finish out this other one off camera for you, so I'm not wasting too much time, but I could technically leave it at this 24 grit where it's all rough and everything, some boots kind of have that look, but the problem is that... Um, it's still not fully flush, even if I start sanding it again on that 24 grit and get it really close. There's a lot of sections here that are just not smooth enough. So if you catch it at that perfect angle, you'll actually start pulling that sole apart a little bit. Um, I've noticed there are some cobbler shops that they skip this step completely, um, even some shoe manufacturers too. And there's just little spots where, you know, it, it leaves just a small lip just enough where if it catches somewhere it can pull that sole apart but um, you know we're not only sanding it on this sandpaper just to make it look better it's actually functional it, it definitely smoothens it out so you have no little lip sticking out and potentially get your sole to start peeling off now this adhesive is very strong but everything does have its limitations so you never know and we'd rather do whatever we can to prevent that from happening but uh, anyways before I keep blabbering more I'll go ahead and finish this one out um, then we're just gonna clean them up and we're pretty much done but we'll see you back here in just a little bit all right we're back here again so we've got these all cleaned up and conditioned it's still a little wet and you can see that it's definitely darkened up but these things were really really beaten up so I had to put a hefty conditioner on them Plus, it feels like uh, he may have used some kind of oil on it too, um, possibly even some uh, snow seal. Quite a few guys, I know you like the, the snow seal, but it definitely darkens up that upper quite a bit. But anyways, um, it gives you an idea of how we resold boots, uh, mainly work boots is this particular process. Um, there are some hiker boots and other types of shoes and brands out there that have a very similar build as well. Um, you know, there are other ones too that, you know, didn't feature in this video, of course, um, but this is just for this particular style of build. You know, there's a lot of other great options you can do to them too, different, uh, different soles, tread patterns. This one we use the Vibram uh, sole that I really like just because of the particular tread pattern it is designed to um, allow mud and slush and everything to squeeze out. Where if you use a different sole, grab one here. Most of you may know this one has the honeycomb sole, or you know other names too. Uh, we just call this the lug pattern sole. These are great for construction work industry because of the tread pattern in particular. Um, it's it's great for absorbing impact, great grip, um, as well as if you step on a nail or anything, it's very good at preventing from you know getting stabbed uh, to the best of its ability, of course. Um, where this one here is designed more for outdoor purposes, you know, it works great for construction workers too, but it's designed more of an outdoor type of sole. Um, if you're a farmer, works amazing again because that tread pattern is designed specifically to squeeze out all that dirt and mud but uh thanks for watching if you have any questions or comments leave them down below uh send us an email give us a call or if you're local here in colorado give um you know stop by uh, otherwise if you'd like us to work on your shoes or boots or any other leather goods and you're not here in colorado or you're 
kind of far from Denver, um, that's where we're located. Uh, you can always ship it into us. Just go to our website, cobblersplus.com, go to the mail in order section and follow the instructions and we'll take care of them for you. Um, but thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe again. If, uh, if you enjoyed this video, we'll definitely be letting out more videos and, you know, product recommendations and down the road, possibly even some, uh, reviews of different, uh, boots and brands out there too. So thanks for watching and we'll just see you next time.